New Zealand has the highest rate of domestic abuse per capita in the developed world. Abuse needs silence to thrive. In this series, Simone Butler, herself the survivor of a vicious attack that nearly took her life, meets those brave enough to break their silence. These are their stories. So where did all this start? In about 2000, uh, our daughter Helen rang me up and said, I'm in trouble, Dad. And I knew who she was because Helen never called me Dad. And when she called me Dad, I knew the chips were well and truly down. And when you talk to women... David White's daughter Helen was murdered 10 years ago by her husband. David now speaks publicly about it, but his pain never diminishes. David speaks at marches and police stations, wherever he thinks he'll make a difference, even though it hurts every time. And that line represents the second that Greg put the shotgun to Helen's throat and pulled the trigger. Ten years down the track, there's this gap here, and I'll never get back to what I was the day she was murdered because too much of me died with Helen. I've had to do a hell of a lot, and the biggest thing to me was, was moving from the emotion of, of having my daughter murdered to trying to do something with it. Helen wouldn't let me rest if I did nothing. She's with me all the time because I'm not strong enough to do it on my own. On the 23rd of September 2009, Greg Meads, a multi-millionaire horse breeder, shot his wife Helen after she said she was leaving. The sad and the silly thing was is that Pam and I didn't understand what family violence was. We'd been in a loving relationship. Our parents had no problems. Never once in all the years when we were talking about this did it occur to us that his behaviours were absolute indicators of the control and abuse in a family violence situation. Monitoring where Helen was and going shopping, who you're talking to. It's even checking the speedo on the car. It's, it's, it's looking at the phone when the back's turned to, to see what messages you've got. So many little things until it gets bigger and bigger, um, more confrontational, um, to the point where Greg strangled Helen. This happened a full year before he murdered her. If someone tries to strangle you, you're seven times more likely to be killed by that person later on. Police make five strangulation arrests nationwide every single day. And those are just the arrests that are reported. Shockingly, 80% of domestic violence incidents aren't. The police talk about 20% of it. My world is the other 80. They're the people that come to me to help. They're the people that I work with and the families I work with. And that's why David is here today, sharing his insights on unreported domestic abuse with the police. Really and truly, I want you to understand a really critical point, and that is family violence, family harm, is not a Maori low socio-economic problem. It is all our problem. Nobody escapes. Greg is a multimillionaire worth over $20 million, and he still shot his wife. From police stations to marches, David is committed to engaging with everyone. Kia ora, mate. Kia ora. Good to see you, man. Thanks for coming along. How do you feel about the gangs turning up to support this? I think it's an indication of the level of the message we're getting across. If we can't work in them in and get things to work, why the hell are we bothering? The last five events I've been along, um, wearing mufti, they never wear patches, they come along. We need to get men to stop being silent. No way, it's not okay. David is a long-time campaigner for White Ribbon, 
a men's initiative to prevent violence against women. To achieve that, he's realised that the real challenge is addressing the root causes of abuse. At some point in our lives, we have to stop pulling people out of the river. We have to go upstream and find out why they're falling in. We have to stop it happening. And there are some initiatives in place that give hope. One of them is run by the police. Safety assessment meetings, or SAM tables, are a holistic response to domestic violence incidents. And that incidence goes before a group the next day. Critical people that need to be there are people like Aranga Tapanriki and, and WINS and ACC and Health and DHBs, people that are involved with that family in some other form. And they share the information about the family involved. It's not just perpetrator victim, it is everybody within that house. It, sometimes mean that, in fact, there is no prosecution because a, pro a solution can be found that unites and keeps a family together because we're too bloody good in this country at splitting families up and taking children out. We need to build families back together again. The repeat offending after people have gone through the same process of being on that table and the help and the accumulated knowledge has gone to the families to help the families, repeat offending has dropped through the floor. But stopping offending before it even starts is the ultimate goal. David's seen what that looks like, and he thinks it's a model for the rest of the country. Three small towns near Ruapehu banded together to conduct a pioneering social experiment. And they did something really clever, because instead of saying, we're going to stop family violence in this town, they did it backwards. And they went out and asked people, what would change your lives in this town? They came up with 23 initiatives that they could solve that would affect directly what the people in town had said would affect them. Launched in 2013, the Ruapehu Whānau Transformation Plan laid out the blueprint for healthy and successful communities, targeting housing, employment, health, education and social issues. The first target was education. The school was failing because Level two, they only had a 50% pass rate. The first problem the headmaster said, parents don't understand NCA, they don't understand what's available. What they did to make the parents understand is they had a pub night quizzes and the subject was NCA. Now everybody goes down to the pub and have a beer, but you then sit down and start answering these multi-question ideas and and the parents finally started understanding what their kids could do at school. Their pass rate has gone from 50% to 92.9. They achieved all 23 targets in a five year time frame. Not a single one of those 23 targets was directed at family violence. And yet, at the end of the five years, family violence has dropped by 50%, it's halved. It will take decades until the rest of the country catches up to the Ruapehu Whānau transformation. But for now, David continues his work. I was in a prison talking to some guys. There was one guy who just said straight out, OK, he says, look, I'm, I'm going home. You know, I'll be out of here in a few months. Um, but I used to hit my, my girls. How do I go into my house and, and what am I going to say to my four girls so they understand that I'm, I'm safe, I'm not going to hit them or be like I used to be? So I put my arms around them and hugged them and I said, don't say anything when you go home. Go in and give your wife a hug and then hug each of your girls and you hold them until they hug you back. Then tell them that, that you love them. And then he started hugging me. And when he let me go, he'd been crying down my cheek. And I said to him, are you OK? And he said, fuck no, man, he says, 37 years old. And that's the first time I've been hugged in my life. What are we doing to our kids where we don't hug our sons? And I said, how are you going to are you be all right? He said, give me a call or something. And he said, I'll be all right, Ra, worry, I'll be all right. That Christmas, we got a Christmas card signed by four girls. Just said, thank you for giving us back our dad.
supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.